Example number six is going to involve solving something that has no solution. So this is why we did the complex numbers. Remember uh, last section where we worked on complex numbers? And so we, we're asked to solve this inequality. If we were, so first let's graph it and see what it looks like. So everything that we've been doing with regards to uh, these quadratics is we find the solution simply by either factoring, uh, using the quadratic formula, or graphing. But what we're really looking for is where it crosses the x-axis because it's set equal to zero, right? And so here is a scenario when we graph this, uh-oh, SpaghettiOs, what happens? Doesn't cross the x-axis. So when can I plug in an x value, and let me sketch this real quick while I've got it on the screen. I've got a graph that looks like this, where this is my y value, this is my x value, and that's my graph. When does that cross the x-axis? When is it going to be less than zero? Never. So what do I write down? No solutions. That was easy. Hey. That was easy. Okay. Does that make sense? Does everybody understand why? Yes. Now, we could solve this with the quadratic formula, and what you would find is if we solve it with the quadratic formula, the discriminant would be negative. And if the discriminant's negative, then we would have to, and we'd have to uh, take the square root of a negative one, which we, we would have a, a complex number as our solution set. So it doesn't it doesn't ask us to solve for a complex number in this particular scenario. So then um, that's it. We're done.